Hi, my name is Jan Edelman, and I'm the founder of Servoy, and proud to announce our next generation of Servoy, version 8.1. In this webinar, we are going to talk about our further enhanced options for validation. In 8.1, we have made it even easier to implement validation on the data level, so you can better architect your applications. Sean Devlin will be demonstrating how to use this in Servoy 8.1. Let's get started. Maybe before we get into discussing it, we do uh, just a quick example about what you can do. Uh, so I'm going to go through a customer form, start removing uh, required fields, et cetera. Maybe a bit more uh, validation, say, on the uh, employee hire date. It's not allowed to be in the future. Or maybe you get into something where, well, yeah, you might validate that they have to have these two required fields, but you might also validate that two fields cannot be in conflict, something like this. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and dive in uh, to the code, but before we do that, um, just a reminder, we're doing a five-part series on uh, what's new in Servoy 8.1. It's Thursday, part four or five. As Jan said, we're posting these on the website, the recordings plus the slides and the sample solutions. Uh, yeah, so there's a new form event in 8.1. It's called on element data change, and it's a form level event. Uh, and you might already be familiar with on data change for an element. Uh, so this is basically the same thing, but it's it's um, called for every element on the form. And similar to the, there's the form focus events, which which work in the same way. There's a there's an event on the component, but also on the form. Um, so it's the, really the the main reason that um, we came up with this as as part of a solution to validation is well, I mean we had a lot of discussion about all the different ways that you could do validation and, and, and how we can help with that. And as you know, with Servoy, we like to keep it very open so you can implement kind of the user experience that you want. So for us to decide how validation should work uh, from a top-down approach um, kind of goes against how we do things. Um, so we came up with this, uh, at least for starters, which is just a really simple addition that makes um, sort of setting up a validation framework a lot easier to do. Um, and so you don't have to hook up a data change to every um, every form component. Uh, you can just hook it up to a form. You can use it in combination with form inheritance and some CSS to deliver a great user experience. And it keeps that sort of separation of UI and business logic, that MVC approach that we like. Well, enough about that. Let's get behind the demo, look under the hood. Um, so uh, let's start with, um, say, our order form here. You can see that we've implemented the uh, on data change uh, event that is new. You can find it in the properties of the form. Um, but actually, what I did in this case was I created a base form called validation base. And you can see that the extends property points to that. So really, there's nothing on this form um, except for the error uh, balloon that I'm showing. But the data, the event binding is already set up. And so really, what we do is we we call, um, we handle this event, and we call a validate uh, method. And so that validate method gets called frequently. And it just allows uh, the UI to always catch up to what the state of the, the model is, say the found set or the record or even form variables. Um, so we're really just using it as a trick to frequently update the UI so it's always in sync with, with how the model is. We're not waiting till save or, or, or some other later event. Um, this validate method is just um, basically it, it passes off control to uh, some other handler. And this is just, as Jan mentioned, the best practice. Um, sometimes we see a lot of uh, folks putting a bunch of um, their core business logic inside of form scopes. And it's convenient to do that because that's 
the starting point, and then also if you want to update the UI uh, as you go, then um, you know it's also convenient for that. But it, it's really um, makes for poor architecture. So in this case, I'm looking for uh, I've written all my business logic in an entity scope, so it has nothing to do with the UI. It might even be in a, a separate module that we include, um, and uh, it's a it's a function called validate and it passes back basically a, a list of errors with some associations to a data provider that might be uh, in error. So um, uh, I don't know uh, if the found set will have it or not. So if it does, then I call it. If not, then then nothing happens. Um, but for our customers table, um, you can see in the table editor I have some. Uh, method implemented here called validate and really what this does is um, well for the customer uh, uh, entity it just iterates over a list of required fields and it attaches um, a, sort of a, a validation marker that I call it which is really just consists of the data provider ID that's in, in error and um, a message and that could be an IETN message or something so it would be uh, ideal to externalize it. Uh, it's also pooling the title property of the column. Uh, so if you if you put a an IETN message there as well, then then it'll grab that. So it's good to keep all that stuff separate. Uh, so the, in this case, we're just doing the um, the required fields, and that's that's a, a pretty simple example. But one of the reasons that that this has been a sort of a continuous topic for us is that that we see that people do validation in all different ways because they have all different Sort of business needs. Um, often, it's not you're not really validating the field itself, but you're validating the whole record or even just the whole model. It could be related records and something like that. Um, for example, you can't have a child record unless a certain field is set on the parent record, something like that. So uh, that's why we're doing this sort of um, on the found set itself, and not just uh, you know, hey, this is a required field or you, the email that you entered is not the right format. So another example of that was on the, um, the orders table. And you can see that again, under the methods, we have the validate method. And in this case, we, we added a little bit more logic to just over and above required fields. Um, we wanted to make sure that the ship date couldn't be uh, before the, the order date. That would make no sense. Uh, in that case, I'm, I'm actually attaching two markers um, uh, because it's a problem with both the ship date and, and the order date. And this is just a, a, an example implementation. You may do it differently. Um, so um, let's take a look at, at what happens in the, the UI. Um, you'll notice in the, in the demo when I changed the this, uh, both fields become highlighted. There's a, a uh, an error balloon sort of out to the right uh, and then if I if I clear the the problem it goes away you'll also notice that as I'm as I'm working it's, it's actually appending the errors uh, and moving that that balloon around as well so there's some activity going on in the in the UI to match up with what's happening in the model um, if we go back to our base form then you can see um, Really, what we do is we get from those those entity methods, we get um, just an array of markers, an array of these sort of errors and associations to which data provider IDs might be an error, um, and then we we update the UI, which is uh, another method. There might be a bunch of other stuff in here too, not related to validation, um, but in this case, it's just uh, it just has validation uh, related UI stuff. Um, and so really what we're doing is we're, we're iterating over uh, each of the fields um, and uh, we're checking to see if, if um, there's a, an error marker associated with that field. I put that in a, in a little subroutine down here that just checks the markers. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and then um, this goes back to one of the earlier topics this week, which is the ability to programmatically add and remove style classes. So I have a, a CSS um, style class set up uh, called invalid, and I'm just going to add it to the field if um, if it did have a marker associated with it. Uh, so that's another nice form 
form of separation that rather than you know program changing the background color to red I can just say well it has the style class and if I want to make a global change then I can just change the style class in one place and I'm also adding a tooltip text which carries the message I don't think I showed that here but um, when we have the, uh, the validation error I also have a tooltip there that gets set and it gets cleared Uh, finally, we um, we want to move that callout bubble. Um, so I was I was programmatically moving it. Could also be done with CSS. Um, that might actually be a better way to do it. You could do it relative to a, another component. Um, and uh, I'm sort of pushing the messages into that um, a variable that's sort of being reflected in that that bubble. Uh, if there are no markers, then I'm, I'm actually with a field. I'm actually removing the style class in case it was added. So you'll notice that when I when I fix the problem, uh, that the the markers go away. Uh, so that's really um, pretty much the UI side of it. Uh, I did want to point out that this is happening in, in form inheritance, so it's it's really setting up kind of a, a framework for how how this could work, and that's how I was able to quickly do this on say three forms. And I thought it might be worth showing you how to do it on um, uh, on a new form. So I'm going to create a new form. Uh, we'll base it off of the products table. And uh, we'll put um, put some fields on the form. Now, um, well, one thing I'm also going to do is I'm going to set that this form extends my validation base form. That sets up the uh, some of the UI stuff that we saw and the, the event binding to um, to the uh, on element data change uh, event. You can see that it's it's already uh, bound up here, and uh, I'm going to go to the main form that I had and also put it in our tab panel so that it shows up. There's one more step that I need to do to actually hook up some validation logic. So I would go into my product and it's looking for that method validate. And some markers. And let's put a little bit of code in there. So arbitrary like it. If the selected record in the units uh, units in stock is um, less than zero, say. Then we'll add a marker and I think we call it data provider ID is units in stock and the message is cannot be negative. Something like that. That's the gist of it. So now we have some some business logic. It's totally separate. We could call this um, having nothing to do with the UI. The UI is handled in the base form. That's the way we like it. Let's try it out and see if I made any mistakes. Here's our products. Ah, I don't know how it came in that it was a. Uh, Table view. Right. Must have accidentally done that. So now we take our units in stock down uh, to a minus number and it, we get our validation handled there. So that's kind of the gist of it.